Hi! Welcome to this part of my review featuring the Goblin Slayer TRPG. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review featuring this role-playing game based on the popular fantasy series, please check out the playlist in the description below. This time we are going to talk about status and advancement, that is player character status and advancement. It's important to clarify and solidify these concepts before we get into the steps of character creation. When it comes to status, your character is composed of life force, movement, spell uses, base spell resistance, wound count, fatigue and the attrition track. Let's take a look at each of these elements separately. When it comes to life force, this represents how many physical injuries and how much tiredness a character can withstand. If a character's wound count is equal to or goes above what is written in life force multiplied by 2 according to your character sheet, they die. Movement speed represents how far the character can move during one round, that is 30 seconds of combat. When running normally, a character can move at twice this value and at full speed they can run at four times this value. Concerning spell uses, this determines how many times the character can use spells in one day. When a character uses a spell, they check a checkbox. It helps to always be conscious of how many more spells you can cast. If your character's spell use is the same as the number of spells they've cast, they typically cannot cast any more spells. However, by using overcasting, and we will talk about this in a future part of the review, they can attempt to use spells beyond this limit. When it comes to base spell resistance, it represents how much the character can resist spells. This value is the basic score to be used in spell resistance checks. The basic score for spell resistance checks is the character's psych reflex plus their adventurer level, plus any bonuses from spell resistance. Concerning wounds, a character's physical damage is represented by how many wounds they have. When a character has a number of wounds greater than or equal to their life force, they will gain fatigue more easily. If their number of wounds is greater than or equal to double their life force, they die. Initially, every character starts with zero wounds. Now let's talk about fatigue and fatigue rank. This represents how exhausted the character is, both physically and mentally. Doing things like staying alive without eating and sleeping or fighting for long periods of time will fatigue the character. When a character suffers a point of fatigue, check one of the appropriate checkboxes. You record a character's fatigue by checking off the leftmost box on the very bottom, moving to the right. Once you've checked off an entire row, the character's fatigue rank rises. A character's current fatigue rank is equal to the highest row that has been completely checked off. The negative effects of that rank are written on the right side of that section. A character's fatigue rank starts at 0. When a character's fatigue rank reaches 4, that character falls unconscious, and when it reaches 5, they will die. The extra checkbox inside the parenthesis is only used if the character has acquired perseverance. We will talk about perseverance in a future part. Now concerning the attrition track, at the end of each round of combat, check one of the checkboxes, either the box or the spiked bubbles, in the attrition track section. If you check off one of the spiked bubbles, the character suffers one point of fatigue. However, if their wounds are greater than or equal to their life force, the character instead suffers one point of fatigue for each regular box you check off, and two for each spiked bubble you check off. From the 40th round onward, each time a round ends, characters suffer one point of fatigue. However, if their wound count is equal to or greater than their life force, they suffer two points of fatigue. Now let's talk about character advancement. You need to keep track of experience points, advancement points, adventurer level and class levels. Let's talk about experience points. They represent how much a character has experienced and what that character has learned over the course of his or her life. When one becomes an adventurer, 
The character gains experience points for things such as battles they were in, exploration, solving mysteries and making deals. These points are gained all at once, upon completion of the adventure goal, or when it is determined that the goal has been failed. There are two sections here, current experience points and cumulative experience points. When a player character gains experience points, they first add the number of points they gained to both their current and cumulative experience points. After that, by spending current experience points, they can do things like learn new classes or advance the level of a class they've already acquired. Cumulative experience points are a total of all the experience points the character has gained. This value will increase but never decrease. Points are expended from current experience points in order to acquire classes or advance them, so they will continually fluctuate. When it comes to advancement points, a character gains these points from completing adventures and advancing their adventurer level. Characters will spend these points to do things like acquiring skills and otherwise growing. When it comes to the adventurer level, this is a representation of the character's overall strength and ability as an adventurer. The lowest is 1st level, while the highest is 10th level. As a guideline, 1st through 3rd level characters are fledglings. 4th through 6th level characters are of middling standing. 7th and 8th level characters are veterans. And 9th and 10th level characters are considered heroes. Adventurer level increases in proportion to a character's cumulative experience points. Concerning class levels, this is a representation of the field the player character excels at as an adventurer, and the role they fulfill within a party. In this role-playing game, there are 8 classes. Fighter, Monk, Ranger, Scout, Priest, Dragon Priest, Sorcerer and Shaman. A class's level is a value representing the character's experience in that class. The lowest is first level, while the highest is of course tenth level. You use the same guideline for adventurer levels for judging the strength of class levels. And this concludes this part of the review. In the next part we are going to talk about spells, skills and attacks. It is great that even at a basic level, this role-playing game system tries to really emulate, or rather simulate, the Goblin Slayer sort of situations. You will remember those scenes in the light novel, the manga, the anime, when the characters are fighting hordes, waves and waves of goblins, and they are getting very tired, uh, quite wounded. This is represented perfectly with this sort of stamina mechanic, integrated into the combat rules, you have to keep in mind not only your spell usage, but also your hit points and how round after round you are getting more and more fatigued. This is very gritty, very realistic. I also like the way character advancement is handled. This is a role-playing game where it is common to see a character multi-classing. In fact, even though a specialization is possible, I think it is encouraged, especially for smaller groups, to have different levels of classes when you first create a character. Depending on your roles, you could actually start out with four levels in total, that is, perhaps two levels of one class or two levels of another, but it's all up to you. If you want, you can use those experience points that you obtain when you create a character to add perhaps two or three levels to a single class. And keep in mind that this is an overview so far we have yet to see the step-by-step -step character creation process and many of the things that I talked about will become easier to understand or they will become more clear when I talk about, for example, combat. Thank you for watching this part of the review. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that have been supporting the channel by sending right through RPG game certificates. If anyone else wants to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you and see you later.